Hi, I'm Karen Woodworth, teacher of music creations at the Kalamazoo Area Mathematics and Science Center's Sislin Summer Science Program. Today we're going to make a water xylophone. So here's what you need. You need a source of water, could be a pitcher of water like I have, which is one gallon in size, or it could be a sink. You need a waterproof surface, like this plastic table I'm using, or maybe your kitchen counter. You need four glass jars that are identical. They could be big, they could be smaller, but big is a good size to work with. You need a glass measuring cup or a plastic one or a graduated cylinder, something that you can measure liquid in, in milliliters. And finally, you need a metal spoon. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is listen to the sound that these glass jars make when they're completely empty. You want to take your metal spoon, you're going to use the back of the metal spoon, and you're going to really make them ring. So you're going to tap the jars, mm, I would say a little bit more than lightly, but not so hard that they'll break. Okay, here we go. See if we can make them ring even a little more. The pitch should sound the same on the empty jars. Pitch refers to whether or not we hear a note as higher or lower or the same as another note. So if the pitch is the same, the notes should sound the same. Okay, now we're going to start using the water. We're going to take one jar and fill it almost up to the top. Now I have pre-measured this, so I know that this should come out to about 800 milliliters. Now the problem I have, of course, is that my measuring cup here only measures up to 500 milliliters. Um, so let's see how we do here. Okay, there's 500. And I'm just going to stash this water in another jar for the moment. Let's see if I've got another 300 milliliters in here. Almost. I'm going to level that up. Okay. So that should give me a total of 800 milliliters. And I'm going to pour that back into the jar. Pour this back into the first jar. All right, let's compare the sound now. And it is a good idea to try to strike the jars in the same spot. So I'm going to go kind of for the back shoulder of the jar. Here's the original empty jar. Here's the one with water. Already you can hear a difference. Now, in this next jar to it, we're going to put three-fourths of the water that we put in the original jar. So, 800 divided by 4 is 200, and so if we take three of those 200 milliliter portions, that gives us 600 milliliters. All right, so I'm going to measure out 500 milliliters in here first. Put that into my jar. And then in order to get 600 milliliters, I need another 100 milliliters. Of course, you could do it in two batches of 300 or whatever combination you want. All right, so this jar, we're going to decrease by a fourth again. So it's going to have half as much as this full jar over here. That means half of 800 milliliters is going to be 400 milliliters. Okay. Okay. 
And our final jar gets 200 milliliters. And I have some water left over just in case I need it for something else or in case I would have spilled it. Now, I've got one more jar over here that I'm going to throw into this mix so we have an empty one. And we're going to arrange them in order from full to empty. So it looks like stair steps. So this is full, second fullest, halfway full, a little bit of water, and completely empty. And now, let's hear what a difference that makes to the pitch of these jars. So which one has the highest pitch? And it's this one, the empty jar. And so which one has the lowest pitch? The jar with the most water in that. So why is this? Why is it that the jar with the most water in it has the lowest pitch and the jar with the least amount of water has the highest pitch? Well, the sound that you hear is produced by a sound wave. The sound wave happens when you set the jar and its contents vibrating by striking the glass with the spoon. The wave in the empty jar makes the glass vibrate, but the water adds mass to the glass. More water in the jar equals more mass. The wave takes longer to vibrate with more mass, so its waveform grows longer. The longer the wave, the lower the frequency, and the lower the pitch. So listen again. Here's the empty jar. Just the glass is vibrating. The wave has to travel through a little water. Wave has to travel through a little more water. Wave has to travel through even more. And then the most water. So now that you've seen what a difference the amount of water can have in the pitch of the jars or what notes you're hearing, now you get to play around a little bit, have uh, some more fun with this, and ask yourself, do you like the pitches the way that they are? Can you play any songs? Let me see, can I play a song on this? sure I like that middle one so much so I'm gonna add a little bit more water and see what happens now I'm gonna take a little bit of water out of here and see if I like that better There we go. Another way to experiment is to get some different jars. For instance, I have this random assortment of jars. These two look like they're the same size, but they're a different design, and that actually makes a difference. So again, before you put water in them, try striking them and see um, what you think of the sound they make. See, this one is bigger than these two, but it actually sounds higher. I was a little surprised by that. Anyway, there's a lot of fun you can have just with some glass jars and some water. And of course, something to set the sound waves into vibration with. So when you're all done, it's time to clean up. And one of the great things about being outside is I can just use this water to water the grass. Um, you could also use it to water your plants. Um, so you get two uses out of it. And so I'm watering the grass with this. 
and the grass is pretty dry, so I'm just going to give it all the water. And one more. All right, and then the other thing to do is to use a towel and wipe off the water from the surface because no matter how careful we are being, chances are a little bit of water probably got on the table or counter and you don't want to leave any puddles behind. All right, I hope you enjoy experimenting with your own water xylophone.